got, I've got seven of these. What do you mean? Gloria. Yeah. Gloria. It was 70 soundtrack, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Hi and welcome back. We've got exciting news. Yeah. We are the Beauty Hags. I'm Nadine, this is Jo. What's our news? Well, <laughs> you know I can't do this. <laughs> we didn't practice this. <laughs> we didn't practice, we never practice anything. We're gonna do an event. Woo! Do you wanna come and meet us? We have teamed up with Curzon Cinemas and we are going to hold a screening and a meet and greet with us. In lieu, actually, of uh, Julianne Moore, who's the star of Gloria Bell, their new movie. I went to meet Julianne Moore, more of that in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, so we tried to get Julianne Moore to come and meet you all, but she had something better to do. That's <sighs> It's like, it's like make an Oscar winning movie, I don't know. Promote She's an Oscar winning movie. They reckon she might get an Oscar for this movie really? anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Anyway, we went to see Gloria Bell and Curzon have really kindly offered us a screening for followers of the Beauty Hags. It's really fun. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a meet and greet intro the video of me interviewing Julia Moore, more of that in a minute. I'm gonna have goodie bags and it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be amazing, and all the details are gonna be down below, not down below, that would be weird, down below this video and also on Joe's and my's Instagram, but it's gonna be coming up beginning of June and we're yes. really excited. Yeah, we're really excited. We're so excited. Um, so what we thought we'd do is we would just do a quick video about why we love Gloria Bell. Mm -hmm. It's about a character called Gloria Bell, played by Julianne Moore, who is, it's a coming of age, but about middle age. Mm. Um, we love her. Yeah. It's we love her character. She just loves to dance. She's a woman who's newly divorced, um, or newly divorced? Relatively newly divorced. Relatively yeah. newly divorced. And um, it's just as Nadine said, it's her coming of age, but her coming of middle age and just really finding that sort of freedom and who she is and having that sort of second lease of life, isn't it? Yeah. And it's it's quite a dark comedy. Oh, it's, it's not, a definite dark comedy. It's not a sort of, I mean, soppy feel good sort of like. First movie I'd ever gone to see with Jo, didn't realise she was a talker. I didn't realise you wouldn't be a talker. No. I'm a front row. Da, 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 what for the whole thing? Oh yeah, sat down within five minutes. She's like, <laughs> oh no, it was just like very um, sort of, I would say, quite pointed references and intelligent commentary on the movie. I'd say just basically going, why is she doing that? Oh no! Don't also, do that. I always guess things you before do. the end. She guessed. <laughs> we no plot spoilers at all, but she guessed. Spoiler! the most amazing thing that happens, paintballing. It's absolutely Yeah, because brilliant. it's That's what I would have done. It's what you would have done. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, I then got invited to go and meet Julianne Moore, and Jo was invited too, but Jo was very, very selfishly, decided to put her family and her husband first and go <laughs> on holiday, so she couldn't come with me. Basically, I went to see Julianne Moore, and I went to interview her, Joe couldn't For a come proper with me. junket film, like when it's like one after the other after the other, and it's like everything is run within an inch of itself. Exactly, isn't it? I got it's exactly like six minutes with yeah. her, and that included no more, no less, and out of the room. Honestly, if Joe had been there, it would have been something out of Notting Hill, where Hugh Grant <laughs> goes and chats to Julia Roberts, and he says, "Are there? What is it? I'm from. I'm from Horse and Hounds. <laughs> Are there any horses in it? Are there any hounds <laughs> oh, in it? Any hounds?" Yes. I wouldn't have had a clue. So basically, say. we'd have gone to interview Julia Moore and we'd have said, yeah, about Gloria Bell, are there any bells in it? <laughs> are you a bell ringer in it? Anyway, and all the whole time I would just have, Gloria, Gloria, Gloria you can't, I think you've got my number. You Gloria. can't get it out of your head. Anyway, what, but Joe and I did together put some really quick, I mean, we literally had six minutes, so we had six questions put together. So here now is me asking Joe and Mai's questions to... Honorary oh, beauty hag. Love her. I love her. Julianne Moore. <laughs> She's now got a restraining order out on both of us. <laughs> Welcome to London. Hi, thank you. Nice to be here. Gloria Bell is wonderful. Thank you. We thank whooped, you so much. we cried, uh -huh. we laughed. <laughs> you never hear Gosh. film critics yeah. vocalise in an audience. Really? Oh, the paintball scene with the whooping? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. That's so, Gloria mm -hmm. is a character you don't often see on yeah. screen. Is this why you wanted to portray her? Uh, I wanted to I wanted to 
to do her because she was just so amazing. She's such a wonderful, wonderful person, and and it's the story. It's it's a, it's the story of a woman's, an intimate portrayal of the whole of a woman's life. You know, of an ordinary woman too. I mean, she's just living a regular life. She's she has a job. She has lots of really good girlfriends. She is still involved with her family, with her children, with her mother. Um, she has a romantic life. She has a, a personal life that's emotional. She takes these big risks. I think that th I think being able to see something like that so intimately portrayed is really unusual um, in film. Often, when there are these imposed narratives of like um, superheroes or rocket ships or whatever, but the drama of an ordinary life is is really compelling to me. You used a word there that I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. She is so real, so regular, so yeah. recognizable, but we see her in such an intimate way. Watching it makes you feel slightly voyeuristic. Yeah. You feel almost like you're standing next to her in the bathroom where she's plucking her exactly. chin or that or you're being waxed or it's... right or that you're watching yourself. Or so a that's what it is. I think, yeah, yeah. So you you start to because of the way Sebastian films her, which is so incredibly intimate, and that she's in every single shot. And you even see like her shoulder if he's on someone else. You begin to feel that maybe it's you. So I think when you get, to, I think that's why people start like whooping in a theater too, because they're having their own experience. They're so identified with her that they're like, yes, you know. I identify with her because we're a very similar age, and yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. often see myself portrayed back. Right. And I think that's so important. Um, totally. But you, you know, what's interesting is that I spoke on the phone to a woman, a young woman in her 30s, and she said to me, and it was really interesting, she goes, it made me realize I could be just as messed up in my 50s as I am in my 30s. And I laughed, and I was like, exactly. One of the things <laughs> I was going to say, are you aware of being a role model? I don't know about that, but you know, that's nice. I think, I think it's that, a nice thing to be. I think it's always great. I always like it when people identify with with something that I've done in a movie because I know how I feel when I identify with somebody. You know, when you say like, "Oh, I just like her," I don't know what it is, but they it's because they're they're allowing they're they're allowing you to see something human, something that we share. So I think that that's what the movies are all about, right? Is Gloria somebody you like? I went oh. through a journey with Gloria. Mm -hmm. I liked her. I wanted to hug her. Yeah. Sometimes I wanted to shake her I by know. the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, did you feel the same way? I love Gloria. Yes. I love her. I want to be her friend. Yeah, you want to be her friend, and you. Um, she's so kind. She's so tolerant, and she's so engaged in her life that I think you. Yeah, you just are like, wow, who? You know, she's, I, quite, she's impulsive as well. Oh God, she's reckless. That's the other thing. She's sometimes you're like, oh, don't do that. Yes. But then on the other hand, you're like, wow, what would it be like if I did do that? What would be, would that be okay? You know, so so there are, obviously there are pros and cons to it. There are sometimes you think like maybe don't do that. It all ends up being okay for her, but yeah, maybe she could be a little more cautious sometimes. You you're in a very different place in your life that she is. Yeah. But do you identify some of her characteristics in your friends? Because I do. Right. Some of my friends are dating again. They didn't think they'd ever start dating again. Yeah. And they're going through that phase where their children have left home, and mm -hmm. it's it just resonated with me completely. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I think it's always nice to see a narrative that's about something that we don't ordinarily dramatize, you know, um, and where we put a character. One of the things that Sebastian says about Gloria Bell is that she's somebody who maybe even is a secondary character in other people's lot, you know, lives in this story. You know, so, and even in a scene, there'll be a scene where lots of people are talking and Gloria doesn't say much, but it'll all be from her point of view. So I think- The tension that, of the family supper. Right. So beautifully observed. Yeah, yeah, and then you, I mean, I love the fact that she does something that's very deliberate, where she announces her daughter's pregnancy and she knows that he doesn't know and then she acts like she's sorry. And, you know, so she does some stuff that's not always, you know, uh, admirable, but you're, it's human. She's real and vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to finish with some fun, quick questions. Okay. Is this okay? Yeah. Um, what song will always get you on the dance floor? Um, Brick House by the Commodores. Yes, <laughs> cultural <laughs> reference completely. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. What one piece of advice would you give to all of the Glorias out there that are watching? Oh, 
that they're, they're at the center of their own life, you know, to remember that always, that that's, that you're at the center of your own story. You're blissfully happily married, yeah. but if you were to date again, would you go online or on the dance floor to find a partner? Ah, yikes. <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody's going online, right? Know, but it's so uncomfortable for our generation. I can't, I, yes, I can only imagine. I can only imagine, but, um, but clubs are hard, man. They always were. <laughs> they were, it's true. And also, yeah. well, I noticed you were drinking a cocktail. What was Gloria's cocktail and what's your cocktail of choice? I just drink white wine like, oh, do you? like every other bougie woman in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think Gloria, I think she, I think she drinks a martini, yeah. actually. She's that hardcore. hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank I you really enjoyed seeing you. it. Thank you. <laughs> So as you can see, you don't get much time, but she was incredible and she answered all the questions, including your favorite cocktail, what yeah. would get you on the dance floor, all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. But what we thought we'd do is because in honor of her character, Gloria Bell, we thought what we'd do, and we want to ask you the same as well, who are the female strong character leads that most shaped your life, apart yeah. from Gloria Bell and Julianne Moore? Or who would we invite to the party with Gloria Bell? Yes, my one would be number one always, Sigourney Weaver as Ellen Ripley in the Alien movies. I did a postgraduate diploma in film studies and based my entire thing around the original Alien trilogies. I think she was like the first sort of kick-ass mm -hmm. woman of that sort of era who was in charge of everything. Who was Get away from feared. her, you bitch! You bitch, yeah, that was right. Yeah. She was in all of them, wasn't she? And also she? she was a cat lady, Jonesy the cat. Jonesy's the little ginger cat oh, that she chases that's around right. and goes back for when you're going... Even I would go, leave the cat, leave the cat. Do you know what, though? I have to say, of all of the like, guys that I know, Aliens are their favourite. Aliens is one of Dan's favourite films, if not oh, the favourite. Is it Ridley Scott? Is yeah. It? Yeah. yeah. Dan, I love those Dan's, movies. I think they're Dan's favourite So that's films. my one. I love your one, too. What, my second one? Yeah. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor. I mean, I was a bit In like... Terminator. Terminator, Terminator 2. Terminator 1, you but see the beginning of it, but the transformation in, in Terminator, Terminator 2. I remember, like, when we were kids, when just before that film came out, she used to be on a t in a TV series called Beauty and the Beast. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, yes. And she played this incredible sort of, like, ethereal sort of New York, Upper East Side, West Side, whatever, sort of, like, slick lawyer-type woman and was just really beautiful. And every Friday night, me and my sister would watch that. And then all of a sudden, she turned up in Terminator 2 ripped with these like ripped guns. guns and these amazing like little black I feel like she's, she's sort of your style icon that character Sarah Connor I just thought she was ready for combat at all times <laughs> ripped and with really good glasses <laughs> yeah, takes no crap amazing and she there's a scene in that movie where she's doing chin ups yes, I know it was amazing. And then when she just breaks out of the um, the, the secure unit yeah. with the pen, with the little thing out of the pen. Yeah, she was amazing. Love her. So you've got the same people. For me as well, and I know you're not particularly a fan of this this group of movies, but I love them. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity in Matrix. Mainly my style icon. Head to toe black, obviously at all times. Mm. Just thought she was really cool. Also, she was the brains of the operation, which I loved. What's your next one? Mine, oh, Heather's. <laughs> Winona Ryder. See, she's ten years younger than me. Oh, I love that. As movie. Veronica. Yeah. Veronica. Yeah. And but that was also about overcoming, uh, sort of, being excluded and yeah. becoming the coolest. It's a bit girl. like Mean Girls, yeah. right? So it's not that much. But for difference. our generation, yeah. And it was, and it was a lot, and it was obviously have a very dark underplot with um, murder, which was like. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is a bit like a bit sinister we like a dark underbelly um, but we love that loved Winona Ryder in Heathers and actually I was obsessed with Winona Ryder when I was a kid I just thought she was in everything that was good that was worth seeing and then she was in Mermaids yeah with Cher with love Cher, Cher. Yeah. Um, so loved her and then mine were Joel Pfeiffer sorry Susan Sarandon and Cher in Witches of Eastwick where they take their revenge on Daryl Van Horn who is the devil I love that movie who, who's Daryl Van Horn Daryl Van Horn is the male character and it's Jack oh, okay. Nicholson. Oh, it's Jack he Nicholson, comes of to course. Town. Yeah, that's and right. Each He's the one devil, of, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. each one of them are... Spoiler alert. Are, yeah, sorry. Each one of them are um, independent women but have been sort of downtrodden for some reason and he comes back and he sort that's of blows right. life into them and then they, and then he, they, they find out he's, he's dating all three of them and they take their revenge. Is that the Brilliant. one with the... Um, 
cherry pips. Yes. Oh god, yes. I remember seeing that. I was quite young when I think when I saw that. Yeah, again. Did I'm she fall down the stairs and that spit all the cherry pips yep. out? Oh, I think that sort of stayed with me. Really? I can't stand cherries. <laughs> <laughs> you would have struck me as being one of those people that can eat a cherry and then take the the stem and do it with your tongue and do what with it? They these they do a you can t tie a knot in it with oh, your tongue. I'm not getting a cherry in my mouth, not after that. Film. If you're lingually ambidextrous. Or dexterous. Anyway, go on. Yours. Um, this one. I think this is really funny. But that I only said that as a joke. No, but I think it's really good. Nurse Ratchet. In, in one flew, in over, one flew the, over the cuckoo's nest. My dad, like when we were kids. Louise what? Fletcher was the actress. She's she been amazing. in anything else since? Uh, I'd need to Google, but that was her iconic role. It really was. Because we, um, my dad, like you know, now when we're really stringent about what our kids like yeah. watch, like I don't let my kids watch anything that's like they're not supposed to watch and all of that kind of stuff. But when we were kids, you my could parents, watch anything. My parents were really laissez faire. If they yeah. thought that it was something that was like, I was watching. I think I, I watched, think I watched that when I was about fourteen at school in the school movie club. That was my, that is and remains my dad's favorite movie. Oh, so it's a great movie. I've that's seen it a, a lot. And when he has the lobotomy yeah. at the end, I yeah. never quite understood that that was. But I'd seen things like The Elephant Man when I was about eight. Yeah, I saw Gandhi when also, I was nine. Also, can I just say my era best movies? Uh, I absolutely love that, and I also think uh, your medication. Mr. McMurphy, and he's spitting the tablets oh, that's out. that's right, she's yeah. Them, I, she's just, I think she got the Oscar for it. She but was she amazing. had that hair as well. Yeah. Do you remember, like, this sort of, like, really iconic... 60s sort of bob with the little stiff like matron, matron hat, yeah. And nothing, but it was so, ama it's so amazing, isn't it, how hair really does tell a huge story. I said when of... I interviewed Julianne Moore, and I, I was literally walking out at the time, I said, if I'd have had more time, I'd have talked to you about the fact that they had to downplay the way you look. So they downplayed her hair, which is beautiful. Yeah. They downplayed her makeup. They put her in glasses. And also the way she dressed. Now, bearing in mind, this woman is normally head to toe Tom Ford. And then they made her basically just look like a normal woman. Yeah. And she was but saying she... that she loved that transformation to become much more Head invisible. Yeah. yeah. But she, but one thing you couldn't pare down is her bod. <gasps> and she's naked in quite a decent amount of it's the film. It's good to see a middle-aged woman have a sex scene, but I'd be flashing it off left, right and centre if I looked like that. But I think she looks quite similar to how she looked in Boogie Nights. I don't yeah. think she looks any different. Oh, she does a lot of yoga, I think. She looks incredible. She is amazing. Like, she's she looks amazing. great actress. And it's so refreshing to see someone of her age with their clothes off. And also it's really refreshing to see her not, as I said in a video the other day, uh, I don't think she's had any work done and to see her face and it's a beautiful face move and be animated and be real I mean she's just incredible in it in fact there is not a bad performance in that movie everybody is perfectly oh my God, like cast the son yes is like her son is paid by the guy from Juno who was yeah. in Juno oh my, he's so funny if anything I wish he was in it a bit more actually mm. he's really good Loved there's it. a scene where they're around the table where they have a family reunion you will never see a more accurate, accurately represented family oh. weird politics dynamic when you have those pauses yes you know those pauses oh, and when pauses. nobody says anything and you're just like dying of cringe and you're like please make it stop please make it stop and then it goes on that little bit longer because yeah. that's what family Families are and they're awkward and, and John Turturro plays her love interest in it and um, we can't give too much away but obviously John Turturro is incredible in it but also I asked her about learning to dance with John Turturro and what did she say he's got some moves really he can what really dance he been, I know he's been in the night off but that's the only thing I've ever seen him oh, in oh god so many Oscar winning movies really? so many Oscar winning movies yeah um okay so my next one would be uh actually this is your one no, well, they're all sort of yours and mine now from now on. Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis in Thelma and Louise. Oh, yeah, I love that film. <laughs> I am Susan Sarandon. She is Gina Davis. <gasps> I think Susan Sarandon's an absolute don. I've interviewed her as well. She isn't, she's on definitely on the Julianne Moore sort of level of absolute. I interviewed them both actually at Cannes, which I think was really interesting, but sadly before video. But this time I will try and get them on video. And then your <gasps> final one. Oh my God, I, I was obsessed. Like when I was. God, how old was I? 12? She's an icon 11, full stop, but... Desperately Seeking Susan. Madonna. Was it Susan Thomas? Yeah. Oh, my God. I loved that film. Loved it. And it was so um, of that moment and of that time yeah. and how she used to wear the clothes. clothes. And it was no one else Drying her wearing. armpits. Like yeah, the under the um, hand dryer. dryer. Yeah. All of that. It had an intimacy to it, the way it was shot, which I think... It's quite similar to Gloria, Gloria Bell's Bell, yeah. got. There's an intimacy in the way that Gloria Bell's shot, where you almost feel like 
like you're in the room with them. Yeah, really. you're a little bit too close, which the sometimes comfort, feels yes. a little bit uncomfortable, which is what I guess it's, but yeah, it's beautifully shot. But both of them are, yeah, I love Desperately Seeking Susan. I do think it was interesting that when we were going through this list, how many, how it was easier to find strong female characters from f like from like from the eighties, early nineties to the late nineties, early noughties. We were talking about this. Do you know there's something called the Bechdel test, and the Bechdel test is a test of the role of female characters in fiction and works of art. And basically, it says to pass the Bechdel test, you have to have two female characters having a conversation about something other than a man. And 40% of US movies do not pass that test, which is truly shocking. God, and I, if we did the Bechdel, whatever it is. Bechdel test. Yeah. We never shut up. We never No, but we never. That's what I mean. It would be like, what? Yeah. 1%? Yeah. I mean, surely we've got better things to talk about. Gloria ends up with much better things to do. Gloria. Gloria. I think I've got your number. <laughs> anyway. The soundtrack is we, amazing. We cannot do this because basically she's, she, her freedom from her mundane life is to go dancing, dancing at clubs, which is where she meets this guy. Anyway, we cannot do any more singing because they'll charge us. <laughs> do you know Really? That? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, licensing rights. We've got to be really careful. Anyway, um, the important thing is, the whole point of this video is do you want to come to an event? Because what we're going to do is we're going to have a ticketed event. We're going to put the details below of where it is. It's in central London, sadly, at the Curzon Cinema because uh, we're teaming with Curzon. Um, but we've and that's got... that's where they are. Yeah, and that's <laughs> where they are, sadly. Uh, but we're going to put the details down below um, and we're going to put the ticketing details down below. The tickets are going to cost you, but that's only because you've got to reserve your seat. But there'll be a goodie bag, there'll be a free screening, mm. you'll get loads more The goodie back. bag will be worth more than Way much. more. And so will, in fact, so will the ticket be worth more than you pay? But more importantly, you get to come and spend the evening with Joe L. Money Jones. can't buy and, and Money can't buy you <laughs> It really can't buy you that. It really can't. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pop over my Instagram details, Joe's Instagram details. The details will be down below. Join us come to an event it's the first ever beauty hags meet and greet movie screening there will be cocktails <laughs> on that note, <laughs> they can't see that can oh they God. thank you for watching thank you for subscribing <laughs> and we will see you at the meet and greet <laughs>